Oh, hello. You know, a lot of people walk by me Sunday mornings and have to comment. They say things like, excuse me, old sage, you sure is a mighty fine dressed man. And I smile, of course, and tell them, well, don't tell me that. Tell my wife. She's the one who dresses me. <laughs> well, she sure got some mighty fine good taste, they say. That's usually when I take off my hat and say a prayer for my dearly departed wife for 52 years. You see, she used to dress me. That is, before the cancer undressed her. This here shirt and jacket, she made those. You see, a pants she bought on sale from one of those big silly clothing stores. And this hat on top of my head, well, that's a story unto itself. But I'll tell it to you if you like. It was an hour or so before my wife passed on, she tells me, with me gone, you gonna be useless. You can't cook for yourself, you can't clean for yourself. Don't let I'm worried when I'm gone, you won't be able to dress yourself none neither. <laughs> she was right. And I said, well, you're just going to have to remind me from the grave a little what nots to wear. How am I going to do that, she says. And I tells her, when you die, I'm going to make a hat out of your pussy. She died on a Tuesday. And on that good Friday, I sat at my leather workbench staring at these pieces of haggard flesh. It was raining outside, and I said, well, it's time to get to walk. For the brim, I chose the darkest of the pussy lips, the labia major. That's what them doctors call it. I stretched it to a circle 15 inches in diameter. That was not the hard part. The hard part came later when I had sewed the lid to the fluid eighth of an inch from the edge. <laughs> That's just technical talk. It's just say after a day's worth of sweat and tears and a lot of rain, my wife's pussy was blocked and propped on my head where it stood for nearly ten years now. You know, before a big rainstorm, I swear I can feel it moisten. If I were you, I'd grab myself an umbrella. <laughs>